Hi, I'm Andrew. I'm working here at Trask as a head of artificial intelligence. And today I would like to talk to you a little bit about generative AI from proof of concept into production. Currently, everybody is in the piloting phase of generative AI. According to Gartner, uh, according to their study that they conduct uh, on a yearly basis, 45% of organizations have reported that their main investment right now goes into generative AI and the POC associated. Not all POCs will make it into production, but the vast majority of them hopefully will. And this will bring tremendous stress on the infrastructure because running 10, 20, sometimes 30 POCs in an organization can create a lot of uh, challenge for our IT infrastructure. If we take a look at the standard architecture that's proposed for generative AI, some of the components that we see in the picture are completely new for us. In fact, the specific number is seven. Seven components that we haven't seen in our organizations a year ago. Today, I would like to talk about specifically about two of them, prompt libraries and vector stores. Let's look at prompt libraries first. Suppose we want to build an internal uh, chatbot, internal knowledge base advisors where user can input their query, their question regarding anything that's happening within the organization and he will receive an answer to it. From our experience, generally users are very succinct in their question and this is something that also research indicates. So they can have a question, for example, like employee benefits. Now, this question is a little bit tricky to understand because first of all, what we are talking about exactly are we an employee and do we want to know what kind of benefits we, we have? Uh, or are we an HR business partner who is just looking at the employee benefit process as a whole? Or maybe we are even a manager who wants to know what kind of employee benefit structure are within the organizations. We can definitely use some context here. So if we want to create a prompt that's much better, first of all, we need to specify the context we are an employee, we are here at the company at a senior level, we are here for X amount of years. And then we also need to be spe more specific about the, the benefits that we want. And lastly, what we would say is we want to specify to the AI as well what kind of format the output should be. So let's we want a bullet point list of all the employee benefits that we have, uh, for example, um, for ourselves. Expecting a user to type all of this in, including even the information for AI that it should be helpful, it shouldn't uh, uh, create uh, something out of thin air, it should just use facts, is something that is really hard for users, they're just too much work. And here is where prompt libraries come in, actually. So prompt libraries are entities which just create this curated list of prompts where users can just type in employee benefits. He will get a box which will say, okay, I want to talk about my employee benefits and it will supply all of the context instead of the user. So how the AI should react, what kind of user we are talking about, that it is an employee at a senior level, etc., and what kind of output is generally accepted. And the user, all he has to do is select the right prompt and ask the question and he will get the right answer. Secondly, let's look at vector stores or vector databases as they are commonly known. So let's extend the example that we had before with our internal knowledge base advisor. I'm located here at Prague at beautiful offices that we have design offices that have won multiple awards. And what I would like to know is who actually was the architect of these offices. So I put this into the chatbot and as you can see, the answer is really not what we expected. The answer says that Trask Industries are a robot building company from Marvel Universe. So that's probably not the Trask I'm talking about here. Vector databases are entities which help us with this problem and can supply us relevant content through something which is technically known as retrieval augmented generation. So if we use a vector database, we can supply the information about who the architect of uh, this place was. 
and then if we see how the question and or probably the answer changes we can see here that we get now the right answer that uh, the architect of Trask offices here at Prague was Martin Stara from Perspective. Generative AI is a very broad topic and these were just two examples in a short form video. If you would like to know more, just click the link above uh, this video. It contains a generative AI booklet uh, which was written by us. It contains all of the information that you would need in a written form. From my side, I just wish you all the best on your generative AI journey.